What's up, Fungal Associates? Welcome to Completely Arbitrary, the podcast about trees and other related topics. I could be like a... Uh, uh, my name is Alex Croson, by the way. Hi, this is Casey Clapp. Continue, um, Alex. I, I feel like I could I could be like an, a local, kind of like independent wrestling announcer. Dude, you should do that. You I know could, we have a local independent wrestling crew here? Yes, I forget what it's called. Um, like Gorilla I, something? Or? Ooh, yeah, I guess I don't remember what it is either. Okay. But I've always wanted to go. In fact, uh, last week um, we thanked Rainy, my friend Rainy, uh, who works with Nakamoto Forestry. Yes. She likes to go to this local like like amateur wrestling night. She's oh, done wow. it a bunch of times. She says it's a bunch of fun. I bet it's a blast, yeah. yeah. You know that it's, that it's you know this show, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I like that they're like, well, we're going to do it too but it's like all local people having a great time yeah. like really yucking it up and you're just like yeah that's it, a lot of fun it's like going to amateur baseball you know yes totally like you're just there to have a good time and root on your pickles <laughs> that's it everybody raises the stakes for themselves because it's just more fun that way yeah exactly if you just compare it to you know the mlb yeah it's like ah, oh, this isn't that great right no offense to any pickle players out there hey yeah they're doing they're doing very great casey alex my friend dan okay uh, host of the of the podcast Dan Cable presents oh, that yeah. I was on. Yeah, he is on a hockey team oh. called the Portland Pinecones. Uh, I love that so much. And they have, I think, I think it's like their version of like an MPV, M, MPV, MP, MPV. What am I trying to say? Uh, MVP. Per- okay, yeah, I like most person valuable, most personable value. <laughs> uh, that is a hold on to your butts. It's a necklace yeah. that they give to the MPV of a golden pine cone. That is, that's that's copyright infringement. I'm no longer his friend. I've, we've sent our lawyers after them. Yeah, yeah. They were going to take them down. My God. <laughs> How could they do that without asking? <laughs> Dan? Yeah, I'm assuming none of them listen to the show. Yeah, well, we but, really wish they would. So yeah. honestly, here's the, here's the deal we'll make. You guys ready? We'll drop our lawsuits. Suits. There are many. Nice. If you all become listeners of our show, <laughs> that's how we're going to settle out of court. Yeah, God, exactly. we're so bad at this. We should have <laughs> asked for money, Casey. To be very clear, all you need to do is just go to sleep, play it, and just put it on mute. We don't. We don't care. Just get us those listens. That's all we want. <laughs> uh, Casey, we just had a a, a run of episodes mm-hmm. about logging. Yep. Which ended last week with Sugi. That's right. Which I think was my, mm, I think it might have been my favorite of of the of the lot of those. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's it's a very curious one. It had a lot, had a lot going on. It really was. Yeah, and uh, we have this this interesting little middle week here. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have an episode this week, a normal episode. It's yep. very good. That's right. Next week, we're gonna have a bonus episode while you and I prepare for what comes next. Yes, which is a very excellent series and also we we had to take a break because we are doing the treemies this week that's right casey you're hearing this and you're in los angeles california or arizona new mexico or any of the other united states come over and visit us at the treemies at the lemley theater yes in los angeles that's right this this saturday april 22 That's Earth Day. That is. It's Earth Day. We knew this. We all knew this. Everyone knows this. I sound surprised. (laughs) Well, it's nice to be surprised. You know, every now and then you remember, you know, it's like, it's like, you're like, oh, oh, Christmas is coming up. Oh my God. I totally (laughs) spaced on that. Good, good integration by Tobin. Yeah. If you're, so if you're listening to this on the day it comes out or even a couple days after, there's still time to buy a ticket and come to the, into the Treamies and watch us embarrass ourselves on stage for an hour. You guys, it's going to be like, uh, we're doing it with Tobin Mitnick of the fame Jews Love Trees. Yes. And it is just going to be a blast. Yeah. Like, if you've heard or gone to any of our other live events, this is on par with that. It's going to be a bunch of fun. The thing that's going to make it different and more fun is that there's an actual comedian there. Right. Yeah. So that's going to be nice. <laughs> yeah. The mastermind behold, behind this whole thing has a good sense of humor. Yeah, exactly. He's pretty, he's pretty funny every now and then. <laughs> well, Casey... This week, we're talking about a tree as we do every week. That's right. And it is the Kentucky 
Coffee tree. There it is. And just in case you got sound emojis to know what we were talking about. Uh, the Kentucky coffee tree, Casey's scientific name. <gasps> Gymnocladus dioica. That's a fun one. And if anyone at us saying dioicus, just go read the Oregon State Landscape Plants uh, rant about that. It's only like two sentences, but... Um, our favorite, uh, just in case anyone is ever um, aware, we use this all the time in I every, it's usually the, the first link yeah. goes to this if we can. Right. Patrick Breen is the curator of this. Patrick went through this and said the scientific name is Dioica, and then said, Often, it's written as dioicus, but the genus Gymnocladus is feminine, therefore the correct attribution must also be feminine, hence dioica. Wow. And then says uh, the masculine form of the word is dioicus. If I have offended any Latin scholars with this explanation, <laughs> mea culpa, mea culpa. <laughs> oh my God. So, so he just throws it back at him. That's great. What a so good guy. Good. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that is that's what very, we're going to stick with. It's very clever. Isn't Cuss. Cut. No, oh, cut. Oh boy. Dioa cut. What have we done? Well, I don't know. It's, You've it's, introduced it's, yeah. two things to me. All at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> crossed them a few times. All at the same time. There you go. Well, hey, we got plenty of Kentucky coffee tree goodness to fuel your your brain gums, but that has to happen. I'm trying to talk like somebody from Kentucky. I'm not sure how they do that. Well, I, I um, think they just do it normally. What? Yeah. They're not all Annie Oakley? <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know. All right. We'll be right back <laughs> with more Completely Arbitrary. Welcome back to Completely Arbitrary. Alex stared at me for two seconds yeah. before that, and I was like, am I supposed to be doing something right now? Sometimes when we take a break, we do we, we go, okay, let me go to the bathroom, and let me do this, and oh, we should probably ah. do it. But I wanted to jump right back in, Casey. I think that's the right move. Because I was feeling it. Yeah, I'm feeling hot. Much like Blink-182. You're feeling hot? I'm feeling it. Yeah. I'm there with some I was down. trying to think of the next line, Alex. I was really hoping you were going to do it so I could just say again, I'm feeling it. I can do a weird impression of it. Dang it, man. We suck at music. <laughs> uh, Kentucky Coffee Tree, Casey. Kentucky Coffee Tree, Alex. Give me that Latin one more time. Gymnocladus dioica. Okay. Yeah. Gymnocladus dioica. 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 Yes, dioica, Alex. There are four vowels and only two consonants. Wow. Yeah, so it's actually quite challenging. This word would cost you a lot on Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, yeah, it would. Yeah, that's right. Well, let's imagine as we do every episode, Casey, that you and I, I'm going to take a stab in the dark here. Please. It's dangerous. Yeah. Uh, You and I are walking along a riparian area. Ooh. Next to the Mississippi River. All right. And... We come across some Kentucky coffee tree. Sure do. Sure do, Alex. Let's ID this tree. Well, I'm happy that you asked. I'm happy also that you found us in the exact right place. Yes! You are spot on. Wonderful. Ironically spot on. It never spot happens. On. Oh. Not ironically in a bad way. Ironically in a way that we'll talk about. Okay. Because the tree essentially can grow anywhere. But it is only now growing in these places. Okay. So this is the Kentucky coffee tree. It's native from essentially kind of the Ohio-ish valley area over to the west up into like just the very lowest areas of uh, Minnesota and then kind of down that Mississippi Valley kind of area. Great. And it's mostly found, like you're saying, in these riparian kind of lowland areas. Yeah. And it doesn't grow too far away from water, generally speaking, for some very particular reasons, which hmm. we'll get to. The best part about this tree is, honestly, I shouldn't say that because there are so many parts that I love about this tree, and I want you to look them up as we say it. Okay. So, first thing we'll do, the thing you don't need to look up, no one cares about, is the form of this tree. <laughs> I want to know. All right. They generally... I want to know. We've had a long kind of like uh, emotionally heavy day, Casey and <laughs> I. So we're just I. singing about it? So it just feels good to be goofy again, doesn't it, Casey? Yeah, it does. Thanks, everyone. We're back home, huh? 
Bring it home. So, uh, it's a tree. It grows up. It can get about 80 feet tall. I think there's records of it getting up to 100 feet. Um, depending on where you're looking at and the kind of variety you have, I've read everything from 40 to 50, 50 to 80, up to 100 feet. Hmm. So, it's kind of a tree that can grow at a variable size, but it's not a tree that's going to be the dominant tree. Sure. In fact, it's a tree that's kind of always going to be like not the dominant tree. Is it kind of like a mid-story tree? It's kind of a loner tree is the best oh. way I describe it. You know how like you go to a party and you're hanging out and there's someone that you see over there and they're just like, they're not really, they're there because they have to be. Well, Casey, mm. I don't see that person because I'm inside <gasps> him. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> this is the Alex of the tree world. I don't know if I like mm. that. <laughs> yeah. You know what? You're not going to like it as we keep going, but maybe you will. I'd love to be the life of the party someday. Yeah. Well, anyway, Alex, this is not the Alex of trees. I will say that because I know where we're going with this. Oh, okay. So it's a tree that is, I think you're right. It's kind of a middling tree. It kind of grows up and out a little bit. It'll take up a nice, big, perfectly round form. Yeah. It has a pretty, a pretty gorgeous canopy. Um, it is, though, the latest of all of the trees in this area to leaf out in the spring. Oh, okay. In fact, gymnocladus means naked stem. Wow. Or naked branch. So it is known for being the latest to come out. Literally a late bloomer. Quite literally, Alex. Cool. Not only that, it is the first to drop its leaves and go dormant again Hell in, yeah. in the fall. This is the Alex tree. <laughs> Show up late, leave early. <laughs> exactly. It's 100% what it does. <laughs> so it's it, you know it gets big, but for, I think, essentially eight months of the year, it has no leaves on it whatsoever. Okay. So the tree grows up and it has this big, nice, gorgeous kind of canopy, uh, this very circular, very round, very kind of common um, forest tree. It just kind of grows up and out, broadleaf mm. of that uh, that decurrent kind of form. Or should we say broadleaflet? Oh, Alex. Yes, we should. We have on our hands a house favorite. Yes, we do. A bipinately Ooh. compound tree. Yes, and not only, Alex, how big is this bipinately compound leaf? Oh, my leaf? God. Uh, so the, uh, to give you a, let's start from, let's start zoomed in and back out. Yeah. The leaflets are like a two inch simple leaf. Yes. Yeah. Around there. Yeah. Yeah. And then you back out and there's a whole leaf of those. Yep. And then you back out and there's a whole leaf of those. The, the, the ultimate leaf is like, what, two feet, three feet? Higher. Four. Oh, well, wait, sorry. You, I, I. I was going to say higher than you said two, three feet. Right. So yes, two, two, three feet. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Sorry. 22 feet. It's a 22 two, feet. Two, two feet. Yeah. Yeah. These are big, yes. big leaves. They're the biggest leaves of all trees in North America. Now, is that cheating, Casey? Is calling, so. is saying, I don't think we can put bipinately compound leaves in the same category as like a big catalpa leaf oh i i i disagree well because a leaf is measured from the petiole all the way out to the ends of all the leaf blade points i understand okay but i think it's a i think it's a gray area personally so are you're more like one complete leaf blade like I so a catalpa right it's like a big plate one, yes. One big leaf blade, no breaks in it. That is a simple leaf. Yes. I think I think biggest leaf should go to a simple leaf. Really? I think giving biggest leaf to a bipinately compound leaf is a little is a little wow. a little washy. Okay, so this is very curious, Alex. I, this is a good question because this to me comes out at the same level of like, uh, what's the biggest tree? Some people are like, well, it's panda because right. it's one big thing, right. but it's like technically all these different individual stems. But see, I think. That the one big tree thing, I feel the same way. I'm like, Pando is not a one big tree. It would be like the, the biggest giant sequoia, which yeah. is the biggest, tallest, the most volume of one single stem. Exactly. Not broken up into multiple stems. <clears throat> right. Okay. Well, well done. You are, you're consistent, Alex. <laughs> well, wait five minutes. <laughs> okay. No, very fair. See, I, I like, I, I think about this as it's one big leaf. Yeah. So I would say, you know, I measure it out, all these different rachis and all the different mid veins, all the stuff that comes in this. That's one big leaf. So when I hold it up from the very base of the petiole and I look at it and I'm like, that's huge. I see the whole thing. I totally appreciate and okay. understand your perspective. You're an arborist. I am not. An aesthete. Yes. Is that a word? I think so. Yeah. That's one great. who One who is focused on the aesthetics of aesthete. something. Okay. Prefers the aesthetic, aesthetic <laughs> ideal. 
Great. Well, well done, Alex. There you go. Well, we have what could or could not be considered the biggest leaf filled with all these little teeny tiny leaflets. Very cool. That is in the entire North America. Well, Casey, Huge. let's can we talk about um can we talk about the bark? Yes, we can, Alex. Oh my god, is it gorgeous. So here's how I described the bark. The bark is often thick and platy, a dark gray and swirly form. Hmm. As the tree ages, the bark develops shallow furrows and separates into curved plates. Subsequently, those plates curl up at the edges, giving it the appearance that it's sort of drying out at the edges. But also, the plates themselves are sort of curved like the profile of a kidney bean. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. Thanks. I uh, wrote that in a haste this morning. <laughs> you want to hear my assessment? <laughs> yeah. You know when uh, <clears throat> you're making a meringue and the recipe says to whip to stiff peaks? Okay. This looks like a meringue. Huh. That you made, and then you just kind of like... How with curious! A, with a with a with a knife. Never, I've never done that, nor heard of that as a <clears throat> as a thing to do. It's a gorgeous bark. Oh my regardless god! Regardless of how you want to describe it's it, it's so gorgeous. It's just beautiful. It's like um, it's like taking the best things of a honey locust tree, which has this bark that has big, long, ridged plates that then kind of pop out. Yeah, I will say it's it's almost like it's almost like um, pseudo paper bark. Yeah. It's got like elements of paper bark without yeah. being fully paper bark. Precisely, yeah. It's like it's, it's like really hard. It's like cardboard bark. Yeah, it's yeah. like a pine paper bark. Exactly. The texture is just divine. So that is the cool thing about it, of course. Uh, also, we should note it's alternatively arranged down the bud, just so you know. You okay. Know, these big twigs. The twigs are huge. We skipped over that when we just went straight to the bark. Right. The twigs are known, like it's an ID characteristic of being big, huge, fat buds. In, in diameter? Fat twigs. Yes. Okay. And that is because, of course, they're holding up these giant leaves. Uh, you gotta be. You gotta be. You gotta be strong enough. You gotta be strong to hold up the... <laughs> yeah, we're doing a lot of song references here. <clears throat> Everything reminds me of a song. Yeah, that's very true. You um, well, Casey, I would love to... You know, this thing's called the Kentucky Coffee Tree. That's right. By the way, coffee tree is one word. Correct. Unhyphenated. Uh, yes, which is, you could also hyphenate it. Let's talk about why it's called the coffee tree or the element that, that the name comes from, which is these seeds inside these pods. Yes. Is this in Fabaceae, Casey? This is. This is in the pea family. Okay. Yes, correct. Okay, I thought it might be. Uh, what gave it away, Alex? Yeah, well, you know, the pea pod. Yeah. The gigantic pea pod. It's a huge pea pod. It is, and that is one of these things. This is a tree that developed with old ancient animals that no longer exist. It is geo... It is geo... It is geologically anachronistic. That is a fine way to do it, though it's not correctly stated. <laughs> I worked so hard for it. I know you did. That's why I didn't want to do it. You know, you, you, you did a good job. Ecological anachronism. Ecological. Yes. Okay. Now, if you're interested in what that is and you want more details, go give a listen to the Osage Orange. That's right. Where we talk about mastodons and yes. such. The episode title is Mastodon. Precisely. Yes. Well, these pods are uh, fucking huge, Casey. They are. They're <clears> massive. Um, a, a lot of photos have somebody holding them in the palm of their hand and the pods are in invariably bigger than their hand yeah like they they are the size of like a modern cell phone maybe totally. not quite as wide but definitely of a of a size like a nokia flip phone yeah yeah exactly Flipped. and they are like just ever so slightly curved they're very <clears throat> leathery when they dry out they start kind of a light brown and they age to a very dark dark brown yeah and inside if you were to rip those open there's a very kind of juicy swedish pulp and inside, mm. nested into this pulpiness, are a bunch of different seeds. I think it's usually between, you know, maybe three, four, five, six, something like that. It reminds me a bit of the pawpaw. It does, yeah. It looks very similar. They're not related. Okay. But they are, that is exactly what it looks like. They get up to like 25 centimeters long. Damn. Like six or seven inches. That's incredible. Yeah, isn't it nice? And they, they persist on the tree for several years. So if you see one, if you see a tree that has them, you see a Kentucky coffee tree that's of an age, yeah. you'll see these kind of hanging around on the tree for a long time. Does it take them that long to mature? Um, no, it takes just one year, I believe, for okay. it to, to mature. But they'll just hang out there forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
And these are so big, being this uh, ecological anachronism, that this is this is the thing about this tree. It developed like the Osage orange, like the honey locust, mm. in that it grew these big fruits so that something would eat them. Yes. However, those things don't exist anymore. Right. Now... They called the Kentucky coffee tree because the native peoples in the areas where this tree grows would take those beans and they would roast them and they would grind them up and they'd make a drink. Settlers, as they came by and pushed these Indians away, they also used this and it was uh, essentially marketed as a coffee substitute. Okay, so what does that mean? It means it's a dark colored (laughs) flavored tea-like substance made with beans in the same way that you would make coffee. <clears throat> okay. And that's essentially where it ends. Right. So there's no caffeine in these? Nope. Not doesn't taste like coffee? I don't believe so. Okay. It was just like a kind of a... Like in the way that something really mainstream and popular is always going to have alternatives. Yes. This yeah. is sort of like an alternative coffee in it's the sense like that, that it's a drink. Honestly, it's more like someone was trying to get... Uh, settlers to go out and purchase land and and colonize this area. So they said there are literal trees out there that grow coffee. Go out there and I go see. get those coffee trees. You don't even need coffee. It's literally growing on the trees. Wow. So they go out there, but then as soon as coffee <clears throat> became available at the local store, they would stop using this and they would just get normal coffee. Sure, it's so, a general store. Exactly. So it is kind of one of those things you're like, well, not really, but it was something, and the seeds had been roasted and eaten by the native peoples for a long time. The thing is, though, the seeds are poisonous if you don't roast them. Oh, boy. And all the other mast-producing trees that exist in this area, like your acorns and hickories and pecans, way better, way more delicious, way more everything. So why would they work really hard for these one things that are kind of already scattered and not really available all the time, always anyway. Yeah. It was kind of like, oh, yeah, there's some coffee beans, let's, there are coffee trees. Let's just go get those and we'll roast them up and we'll make a little tea. It'll be fine and we're good. Um, they had a lot of different med- medicinal uses, of course. Um, the native peoples were using these trees for a thousand different things for a very, very long time. But I want to flip this a little bit, Alex. Wow. I believe in my heart of hearts, Hmm. after thinking about this tree, I've loved this tree. Every time I see one, I'm just a little bit excited. I think it's great. I believe that the Kentucky coffee tree hates you, hates Mm -hmm. me, doesn't want to hang out, doesn't want to be around, doesn't like you, doesn't like parties, is upset, and is not willing to change. Wow. I think this tree is from a different time and it hates the new age. Sure. This is a tree that is the old guy sitting on the porch that every time someone comes by blaring (laughs) a new kind of music, he just yells like, get off my porch! Yeah. stupid kids! Listen to Pete Seeger, why don't you? (laughs) Yeah, Uh, exactly. I I think that we can look at this tree, and I think this tree is telling us, please go away. It is not want for this world, Yes. literally. Correct. It's meant for another time. It is meant for another time. And that time has passed. <laughs> yes. And I think the tree, I think it's upset about it. I think it's like so successful. It's kind of upset that like it could, it, if he could, if it had the autonomy, it wouldn't be here. Uh, no, Alex, I think, um, I think it might, but it's not so successful. It was successful. Mm. It was successful in like it, um, I don't know. I can't like maybe it like invented one particular thing that was so good and worked so well. And then all of a sudden everything changed and now it's completely pointless and useless. I see. I, I, the first thing that popped in my mind was a fax machine. Mm. Another thing that popped in my mind was like, let's say you have the patent on a on the cd like that's your thing okay you own that hell yeah and as soon as digital stuff comes out you're just like oh brr. yes but okay the the cds still have their place at least in my opinion i love cds that's my that's my jam is it really i love getting a cd i okay. love having an actual thing um so that you're we're saying that the kentucky coffee tree was really 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 successful yes and was just 
outcompeted by technology. No. It had the world change around it against its will, and now it's a curmudgeon. I see. Because 50,000 years ago and before, Mm -hmm. we were in an ice age. Actually, I guess really like 15,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, North America was in an ice age. Let's set the stage. All right. There's glaciers that have come down and come over all the northern section of North America. There are glaciers that kind of come down and pop over here. Everything's very cold, but also everything is very, um, very kind of warm-ish down below. But it's it's kind of like, (laughs) kind of like you know, in Florida, it was it was what it's like now in North Carolina. Hey, baby, I'm uh, I'm (laughs) warm-ish down below. Down below. So all the trees that exist now uh, yeah. in everywhere that's north of, let's say, uh, North Carolina okay. in the United States, like all the southern half of the United States is where everything was really crushing it and living. Yeah. Then as the glaciers receded, mm-hmm. everything kind of started to move up and get further north. Sure. This is, you know, happened a couple of different times over time. The Kentucky coffee tree is hardy down to zone three, which is like wow. northern Minnesota and Ontario kind of thing. Wow. And it is the last to leaf out and the earliest to drop its leaves. So why would it do that other than having adapted to grow in a condition that stays really cold late in the season Uh and then gets really cold early in the season. Casey. So this tree, I think, loved the Ice Age. Wow. Then it made this long-term relationship to all these mega flora animals. Yeah. And it was like, you want something delicious to eat? Wonderful. Here it is. Oh, wait, hold on. Stop. Don't eat literally anything else. I'm going to put up my barriers and I'm going to be very clear about what we're going to give and take in this relationship. And by the way, the 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 poisonousness yeah. of it is like a strategy, right? Correct. The because, seed itself, right? Right. So when, when an animal, a megafauna, eats one of these seeds, yeah. it's like, oh God, this is making my belly hurt. Yeah. I better like poop it out immediately. Exactly. And it, the seed isn't digested. It just comes out as is yes. and starts to grow. Yeah, exactly. It's it's not, it, in fact, I believe most of the rest of it is very much not palatable for anything else either. That's So it's really good at that. At that. It is that fruit. The, yeah. the fruit itself and that big pulpiness in the middle, yeah. that is what is the edible part. Gotcha. So you're exactly right. In fact, this tree is so, so like intimately involved mm. that it would have to be eaten. Those seeds go into the stomach, which is full of acid. They sit in that acid for a while while everything else around them are dissolved. And then they pass through and get defecated during the call of nature through a glyptodont. (laughs) It then drops down, and that is what's called scarification or scarification. Scarification. Yeah. It's literally the seed has to be scarred or etched or some other way of like kind of destroyed a little bit. Like it's got to have some wound on it or else it won't germinate. Really? Yes. Lots of different trees are like this. Lots of different plants are like this. And it's a designation that seed basically is triggered to start growing once it passes through an animal because the acid breaks down the outside of it. Uh And once that outside gets broken down, that is the trigger that then goes boom, 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 start growing. Why does that... So that's telling the seed that it has been... I mean, not... You know, not literally. I, yeah, but well, I, speak figuratively. Okay, that's telling the seed that it has passed through an animal and is now sitting on the ground in a pile of manure. Ready to grow. Or fertilizer, I should say. Yeah. Maybe. Interesting. That's exactly what the right. hell? So Th- This reminds me of another, another one of these kinds of things, another trigger. Yeah. Uh, how plants or uh, trees will kind of note the first day of the year where yeah. it's like warmer more than it is cold. Yep. And that's when they, that's how they know it's spring and yeah. start to bloom. Exactly. Yeah. Like what I, they what keep is track of this stuff? Is this a chemical uh, communication? Like, Ooh. or how does this, how does you this know, work? Casey? I don't really know okay. what it is because the only way it grows, why now 
in the modern day, this tree grows as a um, a wetland kind of lowland area tree. Yeah, is that the only means of dispersal? Is that the fruit and the seeds fall in water and get taken downstream and then land somewhere and then the tree grows? So smart. No, that's the thing. That's oh. its last ditch effort. Oh, oh, oh. The intelligence of this tree is that it well, made those agreements with all those megafauna way back in the day. I mean, e- I, I'm impressed either way. To be uh, yeah, it's kind of, but it's kind of like, uh, I don't know. It's like you invent some big machine mm-hmm. and then it's like uh, um, myspace.com. Love it. Myspace.com was the first social media anything everyone had a myspace Mm -hmm. and then myspace got eclipsed by facebook and then by everything else and then it changed hands and now it's like this backwater music thing (laughs) that no one cares about the only useful thing is that every now and then someone goes to it to listen to this artist that they only know from their local area wow so it's kind of like useless now except for this one thing that's kind of like well i mean i guess that's I'll take that. But there are many other things that do it better. Yes. So that like a cottonwood, a uh, willow, uh, a bunch of other things that are dedicated to getting dispersed by water. Yeah. Crush it. You right. know, um, a coconut palm. Mm. However, the Kentucky coffee tree is kind of like, well, I guess that's all I got. Okay, fine. Wow. It hates it. It hates everything. Casey, you're, you're really, you're really, uh. You're really making a good case. Okay, I'm happy. For and the personality of this tree. I think this tree is, un, is I think it's very sad. The, it uh, only grows in small groves mm. or as a single tree. It does not have like forests like we have of oaks or maples or dug firs or pine. Yeah. There's one. And then it sprouts up from there every now and then. And then that's it. I'm thinking of another analogy. Okay. What is it? A, 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 kind of in tandem with a CD salesman. Okay. The Kentucky coffee tree is like an actor who was in Star Trek. Yes. The original Star okay. Trek. Yeah. They were like a fan favorite. Everyone Everybody loved, loved them. them in the 50s, right? Mm-hmm. 50s and 60s. Yeah. Um, it's now 2023. And their their agent is like, nobody's really talking about you anymore. Yeah. But you could go to this like Star Trek convention And they're like, oh, I really don't want to do that. It's so embarrassing. Yeah. But they go anyway, and they're sitting at their table in the celebrity zoo, as Red Letter Media calls it. (laughs) And like nobody really walks up to get get an autograph. The one person that does is just asking where someone else is (laughs) to go get their autograph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're asking where's Uh, the bathroom. uh, Yeah. Do you work here? Where's the restroom? I was Um, famous. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But it does it because it's the way that's the way that the kids are doing it, and they're, it's, they're it works for them. So made I made a little bit of money. Yeah. I think you're right. I think <laughs> it's that's a, a very bleak. I'm sorry. It is. I was saying it. It sounded sadder and sadder, but I feel bad for the Kentucky coffee tree. I think that that's reasonable. Yeah. So let me let me just go through and give you a quick kind of uh, let, let's 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 encapsulate this. Okay. Okay. So we had a tree in the ice age. It was perfectly adapted it had all the friends in highest places it knew the biggest animals on the block yeah not only did it know the biggest animals on the blocks the the biggest animals on the block knew it Mm. they would eat it they would transfer it and to this day the kentucky coffee tree can grow in almost any space upland areas lowland areas middle elevations well it didn't really have a whole lot of middle elevations where it's from anyway so not really a big concern but it could grow anywhere in a field on the streets lowlands it was it's adapted it can do anything okay had this very particular way of dealing with the really cold temperatures it came out right when everything was happening. It closed right before everything stopped. It just had itself dialed in. Right. It has then been living and living and living, watching all of these power players. Like it's another analogy because that's the best thing to do. Yeah. It was, it knew all the heavy hitters and the owners of all the casinos in Las Vegas in 1960. (laughs) 1965 came the first thing that it did was introduce itself to frank sinatra and the whole rat pack and it was with them in all their pictures doing all their drugs having a great time (laughs) knew all the mafia bosses and it had itself set 
Nice. Then times changed. Everyone died. Uh, leg- legality came in and said, no, 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 we're not going to do that anymore. Uh, for whatever reason, right. all of these big heavy hitters went away. And then slowly but surely, all the old haunts started closing. It moved out of this upland area and moved down to this drudgery, like this place that has no fine places the restaurants all suck it's growing with its roots in this putrid soil and the only reason it regrows from seed is because it has such horrible conditions that all the stuff on the outside of the seed decays and then finally it's like well i guess i'm scarified enough i'm gonna pop up a new seed and and there you go (laughs) so it has that everything about it is poisonous and now it's basically like well no one's gonna eat the thing that isn't poisonous or help me do it so you know what no one touch me no one look at me i'm not even going to show up to your party and when i do i'm going to be on the side wow and on top of this on top of the whole thing no one really gives it too much credit as a as a nice tree because its flowers are so minimal (laughs) so it has flowers they're fine but only recently did people start planting it um, because it's a great tree to be in these awful situations of a street, perhaps. Sure. But the thing is, in, in order, Alex, to grow it from seed, you have to either put it in like concentrated phosphoric acid for a long time to dissolve the outer coat mm-hmm. and then deal with, you know, what are you going to do with all the rest of your phosphorus acid for a while? <laughs> or you have to go through and like take an etching of, of oh on the on the thing, God. on the actual seed. And then that seed will grow because it's been triggered to grow. Wow. The only saving grace. What a pain in the ass. It, right? Like you just got to be like, wow, I don't, th- does this tree have any friends? Does it even want to be here? Yeah. The only Honestly, saving grace case? The only saving grace for this tree in its relationship, its last friends, as I would say, before maybe the modern era that we're on right now, all the native peoples that lived in this area, mm-hmm. in fact, apparently all the native peoples across the United States and all of North America, they had a dice game that they played. <gasps> They would play this dice game and they would use, I can't quite see if they would use the uh, the individual seeds as the dice yeah. because they would also like carve things from bone, burn one side. So there's like a white side and a black side. Okay. And like it, Go. Um, I don't know that game. Go is like an ancient, I think it's uh, ancient Chinese. Okay. Uh, with like a little disc that you turn and one side's black, one side's white. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It might be very similar. Okay. And it was very popular with little, you know, rule changes and scoring things that you could do depending sure. on the tribe. But it was very like culturally significant. And they would play this game either for recreation or as a part of like these very intense, like dream kind of, you know, cultural uh, ceremonial Mm, kind of things. Yeah. Um, But it was wildly important. They would play this game and it would either use the seeds as like counting beans to like how many do you have versus me who wins. Sure. Or it would actually be used as those, you know, the, the dice that you would flip. But what they would do is they would etch onto these individual seeds they would etch something like maybe a hand maybe a bird maybe Uh something and that would denote the the blank side versus the other side that has that little etching on it heads and tails now what happens when you etch or you scarify these seeds oh they grow so they ended up finding these trees next to settlements of native peoples all over the place because they would use these as a part of this cultural part of their life. So these trees would be growing and they would, you know, make it into a tea. There's also medicinal things they got from the leaves and all the rest of the parts of the tree. So they had this one last ally and then that got forced out by the colonists and it yeah. no longer has the place that it used to have. Wow. So like everything about this poor Kentucky coffee oh. tree, except for like right now, people are like, well, we can plant it as a street tree. This is great. Everything else about it just is like, it, it's had everything going for it at one point in time and it's just lost out everything. Damn. It's the most pitiful thing I think I've read <laughs> in such a long time. Oh my God, I love it. That's incredible, Casey. There can I can, can I pitch one more uh, one more saving grace? I think so. Yeah. Oh, and we can talk about those saving graces more, well, but we'll save that for the review. Wow. Well, I just want to say I looked up the Kentucky coffee tree on the Wood database. Ooh, yeah. Um, this is a very hard wood. Is it really thirteen ninety 
Jeez. Which is really hard. See, all that does is just sell me more on the curmudgeonness of this tree. Yeah. It's probably hard as shit to chop down. Yeah. Not only is it a tree that like doesn't want to be near you or any of your friends. Yeah. It doesn't want you to touch it or any of its parts. It's poisonous. It wants to be alone. It wants to come out when it needs to, to do its thing. Then it's going to go back into dormancy. We don't care about your stupid sunshine. Stop talking to me. Please go away. <laughs> and then you come over and it's like hard as a rock. And it's yeah. like, you know what? I'm not even going to move for you. You're going to you're gonna work so hard for this. You want my branch, asshole? You know what's funny though? I want it to like me. <laughs> I know, right? What the hell's that? <laughs> Casey, we got to give this tree a review. But first, we got to take a break. Mm-hmm. We'll be right back with some potentially praising, potentially scathing words for this Kentucky coffee tree. Right after the break, we'll be right back with more Completely Arbitrary. Welcome back to Completely Arbitrary. That was our discussion on the Kentucky coffee tree. I think a great one, Case. I think so, yeah. I'm it's happy ti- you think so, too. Yeah. It's time for a review of the Kentucky coffee tree, and here's how it works. We're going to give some final thoughts on the tree and then give it a rating of 0 to 10 golden cones of honor. Casey, as our resident expert, we'll begin with you. All right. So here is here's what I think about this tree. C- Casey is holding... Uh, must Love Trees, an Unconventional Guide by Tobin Mitnick. That's right. Coming in at number 99, the Kentucky Coffee Tree. Oh, on his rating of the top 100 trees? Or? This is, uh, not, it's not a rating, actually. Uh, this is his part three, a slightly opinionated guide to North American trees. <laughs> so I think this just happens to be the number in which it lands. Okay. However, uh, I was just looking at it to see if uh, we had much to say about it. Yeah. Um, and he does say, you know what? It's just a little weird. And I think that's okay. He knows he's weird. The Kentucky that, That's what tree. he says about it? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> you, you go buy the book, everyone, and you read it for yourself. Yeah. My thoughts on the Kentucky coffee tree. I, I like it. But I like it in a way that, like, you see someone who's at the party, someone who's over there, who's doing, you're like, ah, you know, you're really, they're really cool. Yeah. Like, I want to go talk to them. I want to go hang out with them. Uh, hey, what's your name? Uh, uh, Oh, he left. He hates me. They're out back smoking a cigarette. Exactly. And like every time you go out to like <laughs> smoke your cigarette with them, they're always happen to be done with their cigarette and they leave. <laughs> and you're like, I don't even smoke cigarettes. I just came out here to be cool so I could stand next to you. That's how I get, that's how I feel with the Kentucky coffee tree. Gotcha. Like, I think it is a, it's, it's a curmudgeon that doesn't want anything to do with you because its heyday was a long time ago and it's pissed off that it is not today. The Osage Orange, it's kind of fine with it. I think it's just kind of like, yeah, whatever, right, cool. You Osage know? Orange is really chill. Yeah, everything's kind of changed and it's just doing its thing. It's, yeah, it's okay with it. It's way more chill. For sure. Uh, I think the Kentucky Coffee Tree, I think it's it does not like it. It will yell to get you off of its lawn and get out of its bark. <laughs> don't, don't mess with it. But at the same time, that creates this aura around it of like mysteriousness and like who wronged you for sure. And, and I think his answer is consistently people, yeah. all of you for all of time, except for some of my buds. Once I finally got to know a few of you and you got to know me, but now you're back at it being jerks. You know, you know, uh, the Kentucky coffee tree is, is a bit of a Roy from uh, it crowd. Oh, who says people. What a bunch of bastards. <laughs> I think that is true. I think that's true. Rather, I think I'm betraying a little bit that I believe more in the theory that people had way more to do with the extinction of the Ice Age fauna than Hmm. just the change of climate. Sure. I lean that direction. Hunting-wise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, So. (sighs) Yeah, what are you feeling, Case? Honestly, I want to give this such a high score because I want it to know how cool I think it is. Yes. But I need to also remember that, you know, I have to, okay, mm -hmm. Keep it keep it professional over here. I feel like I know where you're going to land. I want to give this like an 8.2, <gasps> which 
What did that's you, great. Yeah, that's that's where I want. But then, like, I think that, and and like I said, I think it's just because I'm like, I think this tree's cool. I want to be your friend, <laughs> but you just don't. You don't want anything to do with me. So I gotta respect that. This but is fine. Every time I see one, I get stoked because I'm like, oh, there's a Kentucky coffee tree. Yeah, those yeah. aren't planted near as much as they should be. Now I know why because you have to literally boil them in acid before they decide <laughs> to grow. That's yeah. Talk about coming out of your shell. Can't you just <laughs> scrape them? Yeah, you can, but imagine taking, you know, a seed that's like the size of a nickel uh-huh. and then going through with a little uh, a little like file and just going <laughs> pick up another one. <laughs> As opposed to just dumping a big bucket of them in a big bucket of acid. Yeah, exactly. All so, right. you know, I guess <clears throat> yeah, you can't just reach in and grab them after that. So, yeah, yeah. there's there's issues either way. There's a whole workflow with the acid. <laughs> yeah. So um, we'll eight, talk to some nurserymen about it. 8.2. Yeah, I think 8.2. I think it's a great score. I thought you yeah. were going to land on 7.2. So this oh, is even better than I could have okay. imagined. I was thinking 7.9 at first. And then I was like, you know, I do think this is a cool tree. If they were planted everywhere all the time, I would be stoked about yeah. it. And I think they would be too. But I just think we also need to, you know, I don't know, bring back uh, giant sloths. Bring back giant sloths. Hey, speaking of anachronistic um, animals, yeah, we talked about bringing the dodo back. Bring back the giant right? sloth. Yeah, come on. Do something more than a just dodo. I love the dodo, but mm, ecologically speaking, yeah. we need short, short-faced short bears and <laughs> giant sloths, glyptodonts, yes. mammoths. Who cares? Put the pedal to the metal and get us some cool megafauna. Yeah, bring us back to uh, 13 to 50,000 years ago <laughs> and let's just make it happen. Hey, we might, we might be there in a, f- a, f- a few hundred years, Casey, if this, uh, if this whole climate keeps changing. Huh? Wouldn't that be funny if like our global warming actually just like gets to a certain point, reverses and puts us into an intense ice age. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I always think about like what I would do in the post apocalypse, you yeah. know, cause I don't really, I don't really know I, I, all of my skills depend on like Technology. internet access essentially <laughs> <laughs> and guitar i guess i could be a, a traveling bard yeah that's that's true you can do that 8.2 golden cones of honor that's what i think alex uh what about you what do you think as the uh resident esthete there's nothing i don't like about this tree really to me it's sort of like it's sort of the reason i i, I discovered throughout the episode the reason i predicted that this would grow in a riparian area yeah because it reminds me of the black walnut mm, which okay. i guess maybe don't grow in riparian areas they do yeah they're bomb okay. trees yeah. yeah 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 it reminds me of the black walnut i think bipinately compound and uh, it well, just looks yeah. like a black walnut to me it reminds yeah. me of the same kind of like yeah. vibe i should note that uh, the black walnut is only compound it's not by pinately compound oh, it's just pinately compound but well. the, the they look similar if yeah. you look at the secondary pinna so you're not wrong pinna. i just i just want to make sure that as we're saying this we're not going to have someone send an email and be like you know alex got that wrong <laughs> alex knows this everyone thank you casey anyway continue i'm, I'm sorry i interrupted i don't think i do did know it off the top of my head but ah. now you know now I know. Uh, yeah, it, it reminds me of Black Walnut, which I a tree that I have a, a great admiration for. You are Mr. Walnut. I am Mr. Walnut. Uh, I love a bipinately compound. I've also heard doubly compound. Mm. I heard that in a YouTube video. Huh, yeah. Hmm. Um, from the Kentucky Extension Service or something. Doubly like, Okay, the I mean... Kentucky Forestry Extension Service. I guess. It just doesn't tell you what kind of double compound it is. Fair enough. You know? Uh, a road best left for another time. Yes, agreed. Um, I also... I, I, I'm i reading this wood database uh, thing about it. And it's all kind of like, meh, whatever. And then they're under workability. It says, coffee tree has good working characteristics and nearly every machining operation can be done with good and expected results. Glues, stains, and finishes well. So... The Kentucky coffee tree may be a bit of a curmudgeon. It doesn't mm-hmm. want you on its lawn. Nope. But once it's dead and has given you its corpse, it plays <laughs> ball. I love that. Oh, God. Alex, that's that's great. 8.5 golden cones of honor <laughs> for the Kentucky 5. coffee tree. 7.5 if it's alive, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an instant classic, Casey. That's I love amazing. it a lot. Yeah. Now, Alex, I was thinking that you were going to say that you like this tree a lot. Because my question, actually, before I say what I thought, I want to uh-huh. know what you think. Uh-huh. Do you feel, per our conversation at the beginning, uh-huh. that this is 
a, a tree that you personally relate to? Um, a tiny bit, is not, this, but not really. I'm okay. not. I'm not like a. Cur- I'm not like a cranky dude. Yeah, I'm not no, like a curmudgeon. Not. I like people. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's just I also really like being alone. Yeah, you like being you know on the side of the party. Come come late, leave early. Yeah, <clears throat> but not because I think I'm cooler than everyone. It's just only because I I'm afraid of uh attempting to connect with people and it not working out and me feeling feeling really bad about that i think this is the alex tree Ah, because i think that's also what it's done it it connected it was absolutely connected to old fauna and every time it's tried to reach out to the new fauna no one cares i guess there's one other thing which is I do have a bit of a streak of trying to poison people. Well, yeah, that's true. And every time I take a, a little bit of acid and I throw it on you, you really come out of your shell. You really do. You really become quite animated. <laughs> that was our review of the Kentucky Coffee Tree. Casey, it's time for our completely arbitrary Q&A this week. We're going to the Patreon, as we always do. Casey, our Q&A tier, Quercus and Alder. It's three bucks a month, and you get the chance at getting your question read on air. And if not on air in a patron exclusive Q and a, and there is another benefit to doing this is that you are supporting the podcast, which I always, I always forget about. No, that is true though. This one's from Kayla. Hi Kayla. Hi there. Says Kayla. I work at a factory that makes a Royal pine scented product. It has me wondering which pine would you consider royalty? Oh, Casey, that's a great question. I love this question. I love questions like this where we get to kind of muse and yeah. philosophize. All right. Well, what do you think then? What's a, what does it start out with? I'm going to pitch a couple. A couple. Is that a pun? Are you throwing, oh. Are you punning me right there? It was accidental. My first kind of selection in this royal draft of pines. Yeah. Bristlecone pine. Ooh. It is the banished. It is the exiled king. Gotcha. That lives on the mountaintop. Yep. That one day will return to the throne. Yeah. Okay. To take it from his usurper brother, right? Ah, Jeffrey. <laughs> yes. My, I'll let you choose one, and then I have another one. Okay. Okay. I I I love the idea of a royal pine, um, but the thing that like the first thing, and this is kind of ironic, when I think of royal pine. The first smell that comes to my brain is like a true fur. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so is yeah. that bad of me to say, oh, royal pine uh, smells exactly like a grand fur. Right. Because, th- yeah. That's it's like interesting, Casey. The citrusiness, the, the quality of it. You yeah, know? The, yeah, the yeah. The Christmas tree smell. Yeah. That's, that's what I think of. What does the pine saw smell? It's lemon, which is also citrus, right? Is is there another, is there, is there like pine pitch in there? I don't think so. I okay. think they just, I mean, not I, literally. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I think they might've just made it smell like lemon or maybe just lemon pine saw is what it is, but mm. it has like that, that lemony citrusy smell sent to it. I got you. That I think is really what, where that comes from. I got you. But I, we need to stick to it. We need to come up with an actual Royal pine. Can I, I'm going to pitch mine up my next yes, one. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, only because I love the cone so much. Wow. And it's sitting right next to you, Casey. <gasps> an Italian stone pine. Italian stone pine. Love an Italian That's stone pine. That's the royal pine. one. Okay, yeah. I Maybe think that makes sense. one of my favorite sense. pine trees. Yeah, I think that, that feels right. Ooh. Okay, so those those are both like, those are really both, you know, good ones. They have a lot of metaphor to them, I think. I agree. Hmm. I, the, the first one truly that comes to my brain is uh, a ponderosa pine, but also... I guess the first three, a red pine, Pinus resinosa, mm. I think is the, that one, uh, and the eastern white pine. Eastern white pine's a good choice. Yes. And the reason I think this, <laughs> this might just be uh, from where I am. You know the Yankee Candle Factory? Oh, yeah. The Yankee Candles, rather? Yes. The factory, in my experience, is in like Western Massachusetts. Okay. So all the scents that they usually come up with, you know, they'd start with the things like in their local area. Yeah. And so my brain immediately thinks of the red pine and the eastern white pine. Interesting. And I would also bet that the flavors that they have are more... They have more sense and nuance than just hmm. the 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 smell of the pine needles, you know, the fresh ones. Yeah. I think when you go to a pine forest, it's like the duff, like the everything that's decaying around has like that certain piney smell to it. Yes. But it's more of a woody smell than like a citrusy smell. Right. So I bet you that it's more of a pine, a royal pine 
woodland, which makes me think it's a Scots pine, which is a royal pine that you'd find in, say, uh, a royal hunting ground. Interesting. Yeah. What do you th- what do you think about that? I think that all sounds great. All right. So maybe Alex, it's actually just all of these different scents put together in a mishmash. Yeah. Exactly. Like take all the royal kinds of pines and put them into one flavor. Well, I do want to say that's not the original question, Casey. Well, oh, it was mm, just what pine is most right. royal. You're right. And can okay. I double down on Italian stone pine? Yeah, I think you can. Because it's one of the only pine trees I know that has a crown. Oh, wow. It does. You're right. They do. They grow up and they're very flat top like that. Okay. Yes. Wow. Okay. They all technically have crowns. Well, okay. I yeah. Know. I, you, know, you know, you're right. I'm sticking with your, your agreement there. <laughs> there you go. All There's right. the answer. Thank you so much, Kayla, for your wonderful question. If you have a question for us, like I said, join the Patreon at the $3 tier. It supports the podcast. It's an easy way to get in and ask some questions. You're going to get your question answered either on a patron-exclusive Q&A or on a mainline episode. It depends. That's exactly right. Above that is the $5 Arboretum tier. You get two bonus episodes a month about other related topics and trees. It could be anything. An interview, a hangout sesh with Casey and I. That's right. Some deep dive on a really specific thing that Mm -hmm. we we couldn't really fit on the mainline pod. Yeah, right. We mused about death uh, of trees and what that means a while back. That's right. One of our favorites. That turned into a two-parter, in fact. It did, yeah. Um, And then above that is our flagship tier, the Cone of the Month Club. So good. Here's how it works. We get a artist, an independent artist somewhere in the world to illustrate a conifer cone for us of many different species. We get them printed locally here in Portland, Oregon on a sticker. And we send that sticker to you in the mail with a little info card about that species, Mm -hmm. a little fun fact in the summary, where it grows, the, the, uh, the scientific name, each envelope is guaranteed to be licked by the tongue of Casey Clapp. And you get a different one every month. You also get access to the Patron Cone Shop, where you can buy any of our past cones inventory. That's exactly right. At a steep discount, I will say. Mm. Above that is our $15 tier, Arbitrary Plus. It's our live stream tier. Twice a month, you get a live stream from completely arbitrary one is from casey and i about a host of topics and one is from just me playing a game twitch style about trees or other related topics trap above that generous admission it's the most the most best place to be it's so generous twenty dollars a month or more you can choose what you want but it is the we talked. We've used the word "ultimate" a lot lately, Casey. Mm, yeah, the ultimate way to support this podcast. It's just so much. It's great. It's incredible, and we're 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 uh, blessed to have a handful of people supporting us at that tier. And we welcome you to join at any tier. patreoncom slash pod. By the way, there's also a one dollar tier. Yes, which is the tree jar. huggers. That's right. We love you guys. Just a little tip jar. Yeah. Also, please follow us on Instagram at arbitrarypod. You can find us on Facebook as well, and you can we'll po- you post new episodes and mm-hmm. pictures and updates on what we're up to, fun videos. Yeah, it's a lot of fun stuff. That's right. Yeah. It's kind of a nice, kind of a compendium to the podcast. It is. We also have a newsletter, a literal compendium to the podcast. Yes. So you can sign up on our website, or you can go to our store, buy something, some merch, and then say, yes, sign me up for news. We don't send uh, more than one every four or five, six months. <laughs> so, you know, don't, Not don't by worry. Not design. Yeah, don't worry about any amount of spam coming to you that way. Yes. Casey Clapp. Alex Croson, thanks for coming on this journey with me into this uh, this tree's yard. It was a great one. I sort of love these episodes where you pose a, an opinion ah. and then use the episode to convince me of your opinion. Okay, good. Okay. While giving me a platform to disagree, agree, what have you. A, whatever other options there are. It's so fun. I abstain from decision making. <laughs> Thank you. Overruled. Oh, shit got to make a decision <laughs> i can do that wow yeah. uh casey clap thank you so much alex thank you and thank you for listening to this episode of completely arbitrary hey we got a week off next week we've got a bonus episode for you but the week after that stay tuned for some excellent news that's right and come see us at the tree Mies. april 22nd earth day that's right bye everybody au revoir
Completely Arbitrary is produced by Alex Croson and Casey Clapp. Our artwork is by Jillian Barthold, and our music is by Aves and the Mini Vandals. And you can support the podcast at patreon.com slash arbitrarypod. And find additional readings at completelyarbitrary.com. Thanks for listening. 